This is the Kendall Coolcam Eagle, one of the weirdest camera that I have used for quite a while. It is definitely not a perfect camera, far from it. The company has made some pretty strange design decisions, but at the same time, it is a super fun camera that not just me, even my family loves it. So let's have a look at this Coolcam Eagle and see what it is and why we love it despite some of its flaws. Kia ora, good morning everyone, Rich Wong here. Welcome back to the channel. So we are looking at this Kendall Coolcam Eagle today. What is this funny looking camera? It is a very compact stereoscopic 3D camera, but not only that, it has the clip-on 3D viewer, which allows you to check the photos and video you capture in 3D immediately. I know this Coolcam Eagle is quite a small camera, but it's not until I received this sample unit from Kendall that I realized how compact it really is. It is a truly pocketable camera. And I thought it would be quite a plastic camera, like a lot of compact cameras in the market. But turns out a large part of this camera is made of metal and the camera just feels very solid. Even the battery door, even though it is mostly made of plastic, but it doesn't feel flimsy at all. Speaking of the battery door, when I first received the camera, it took me quite a while to figure out how to open the battery door, partially because it has an almost waterproof design, so it is just very tight. But if you are struggling to open the door just like me with your brand new Coolcam Eagle, what you could do is you just push this area around here, and then you can pull the tab, and that would make it a lot easier to open the door. Yes, it is probably very tight when it is brand new, but it does loosen up a little bit after you use it for a couple of weeks. The camera has some kind of rubber finish outside, which make it very easy to grip and it doesn't feel slippery at all. And also it provides a little bit of impact protection and also water protection as well. However, the rubbery matte finish is also a bit of fingerprint magnet, especially with this black sample that I received from Kendall. If your hand is slightly oily, then you will leave oily mark onto the surface of the camera. Kendall did include a microfiber cloth in the box. At first, I would use that microfiber cloth to keep the camera clean, but after a week or so, I started to get tired of doing that, so I just leave all my fingerprints and oily marks on the camera surface. At the front, there are two cameras. They are approximately 28mm equivalent focal length, and the lens is f1.8, so it's quite a wide-angle lens, but it's not like an action camera that has almost a fisheye kind of field of view. The cameras are separated about the same distance as our eyes, so it captures two pictures or videos at the same time, and when you view them together, it will give you the 3D effect. There is no LCD screen at the front, but if you want to take a selfie or do a bit of rocking style video, there is a little mirror that you can magnetically attach to the front of the camera so that you can see yourself using the reflection of the mirror. It is a very low-fi design, but it actually works surprisingly well. A good thing about using this mirror attachment is that it doesn't draw any power and it doesn't matter if you're shooting under very bright sunlight, you can still see yourself very clearly, unlike some of the other small LCD screen, which may not be bright enough and hard to see if you are shooting outdoor on a very bright sunny day. I mentioned before the camera has an almost waterproof design, so the battery door has rubber seal around it, all the buttons are placed under the rubber coating, so I'm pretty sure you can use this camera under a bit of rain or snow or when there's a chance water may splash onto the camera directly. But Kendall does not rate it as a waterproof camera, so don't go swim underwater with this camera. Now, while I like its almost waterproof design, as that means I can use it under pretty much any kind of weather condition, and even when I go to places that the camera may get really wet, it's still okay. 
but there are some downsides as well. One is that the rubber make it harder for the camera to cool down itself. So after using the camera for a while, the camera does feel quite warm. I haven't got any overheating issues myself, but I haven't really tested the camera on a hot day here either. The other downside is that the buttons on the camera are quite hard to press. You really have to press it quite hard to trigger it and this is especially a problem for the shutter button at the top of the camera here. So when you are taking photos because you have to press the shutter button quite hard and you may end up causing a bit of camera shake. Fortunately, Kendall has released a new firmware just a while ago which added a touch screen shutter button so you can use the button on the touch screen instead and that won't introduce any camera shake as you can just lightly tap it. The other workaround is that you can use the timer feature on the camera to delay the photo or video capture. And speaking of the buttons, there are not that many buttons on the camera. There are only two at the top and then there are three on the side. But there are some additional features and settings that you could only assess from the screen area at the back of the camera. Since the camera is mainly designed as an easy to use, fun to use camera, so it doesn't really offer too many manual control to the users. You can still do things like adjusting the exposure compensation, setting the video frame rate, or set the output photo format, which right now is only JPEG, but Kendall told me that DNG RAW file support will be coming soon. And there are a few other settings as well. So for most users, I think it is enough but it is definitely not a camera for people who want to have full manual control of everything. Because it is quite a compact camera, so the touchscreen at the back is also not really big. It is only 2.54 inch and it takes up only half the width of the back of the camera. I wish the screen is a bit bigger. It would be fantastic if the screen used up all the space available at the back of the camera. But the screen itself is very nice quality, very high resolution. I can't even see the pixels on the screen. And the touch screen is also very responsive. So when you use it to bring up some menus or change some camera settings, it works pretty well. Scrolling the menu is also pretty smooth and very responsive as well. I initially thought doing things like tapping my Wi-Fi password on this small screen would be horrible, but actually it's not too bad. But yeah, I do really wish the screen is a bit bigger, mainly because this is what is used as a screen for the 3D click-on viewer, which we will talk about in a second. This Coolcam Eagle is a manual focus camera. There is a focus distance scale on the screen with the usual flower, people, and mountain icon to tell you the focus distance. There's also a number in both centimeter and feet to tell you the exact distance for each of the focus setting available. You can either use the two button on the side of the camera or through the touch screen interface to adjust the focus. Unfortunately, because the screen is not that big, you can't really look at the screen and tell whether the focus setting is correct or not. There also isn't a zoom in preview feature for you to check the focus. So it's possible you would choose a wrong focus settings and not realize until you got home and check your photo or video on a bigger screen. But because of the relatively small sensor size of the camera, you don't need to be super precise with your focus setting. Even if you choose a setting that is slightly too far or too close, it's usually not really that noticeable. And to be fair, many focus on this camera is not too difficult even if you are a completely beginner. I've asked Kendall, is it possible to add some kind of autofocus feature with this camera via firmware update? Even a very basic autofocus feature would be great. They explained to me that there are some technical challenges, so they can't really promise whether they can do it or not, but this is definitely on their to-do list and they will look into that in the near future. If Kendall managed to add autofocus to this camera, I will add that to the video description and maybe pin a comment about that. While I'm pretty happy with the overall control and operation of this Coolcam Eagle, one thing that annoys me a bit is the power on time. It takes almost 20 seconds for the camera to completely power on before you can take your first photo or video. 
This is really a bit slow, and I hope Kandao can shorten that startup time a bit in the future. Okay, this is the clip on viewer. This accessory comes with the camera. To use it, you just place it at the back of the camera and then it will attach onto the camera. And now the Coolcam Eagle is not just a 3D camera, but also a 3D viewer. With this viewer attached to the camera, when you play the photo or video you capture, the screen will split into two half and show you the stereoscopic images through the 3D viewer. It's a bit like the old school view master, but now you can capture your own photos or even videos and review it straight away. This is super cool and super fun. I show it to my kids and they love it. It's such a simple design, but sometimes in our life, simple things are the most enjoyable things. And this clip on viewer is not just for replaying your video or photo, even when you are shooting or framing your photo or video, you can still use it to preview your scene in 3D, which is really quite cool. And I think Kandao must purposely pick this bright red and black color combination to remind us about the view master and I just love this visual color design. However, one thing that I don't really like is the viewer has a 90 degree angle between the back of the camera screen and the side that you put your eyes on to look at the 3D viewer. So this is not a problem at all when you are just replaying your photo or video. But if you want to use it when shooting, that means you have to bend your head or neck forward 90 degrees. So if the camera is pointing forward, your eyes are looking down. I don't know why they designed the viewer like this. And I would much prefer if it's just a look straight design. So I don't have to look at my scene in 90 degrees angle. But anyway, the Coolcam Eagle is pretty much the only 3D camera that I know of that is available in the market right now, which allows you to view your photo and video in 3D instantly on the camera itself, no matter where you are. And this is what makes this Coolcam Eagle so much more fun than most other 3D cameras in the market. I can immediately show the photos or video to my family or friends. For a pocketable 3D camera that costs less than 400 US dollar, I really wasn't expecting too much in terms of picture quality, but turns out it's not too bad. The photos captured by the Coolcam Eagle is 12 megapixels from each of the camera. So the side-by-side -side 3D photo is 24 megapixel. The photos look really quite nice. Not overly high contrast or high saturation. The JPEG straight out of camera looks pretty pleasant to me. Dynamic range wise, since the camera doesn't have any HDR feature, so when shooting some high contrast scenes, highlight could blow out a little bit. But for a compact camera, I think the result is very acceptable. One thing I was a bit surprised is the camera's low light performance because the camera doesn't have a really large sensor. So I thought the photos shot at night would be pretty poor quality, but turns out the nighttime photos looks quite all right. It can maintain reasonable amount of details and the noise isn't too crazy. As I've mentioned just before, Kandao is working on new firmware which will add DNG raw file output. So I would be really curious to see what the raw file output will be like. The only real issue I notice with my photos is that the photo from the left and right camera does not align perfectly vertically. The photo from the right camera always point a little bit higher than the left camera. And this also happens when I'm shooting video as well. I've checked with Kandao about that and they told me there will be a future firmware update to allow vertical alignment calibration. I'm not too sure if it's a software or hardware based solution, but at least it's good to hear they are aware of the issue and planning to do something to address that. And for video, the stereo 3D output is 3840 times 1080 pixels up to 60 frames per second and the bit rate is 60 megabit per second. The video also looks pretty nice. Once again, very present looking colors and the 60 frames per second video is smooth. However, since the camera doesn't have any optical or sensor-based stabilization system, so handheld footage could look a little bit shaky. 
So I shot a lot of the test video footage using a small gimbal and that works very well. But Kandel has just added electronic image stabilization support in the latest update and I will show you some results a little bit later on in this review. But yes, it works pretty well. When I upload the video to YouTube and check the footage using my Oculus Quest 2, I was actually quite impressed. While the 3D separation seems a bit more than usual for the close-up scenes, otherwise the 3D video looks pretty decent. Look at this footage that I shot at night. It's quite a dark location and the result is really not bad as well. By the way, I have uploaded a video that is consists of video I shot with this camera that I've not done any color grading or processing apart from just cutting them together. I've added a link to the video description below and also at the end of the videos. So remember to check it out if you want to see what the 3D video quality is like from this Kandao Eagle. Anyway, apart from the vertical alignment issue that I mentioned before, I'm overall pretty happy with the photos and videos that I capture from this tiny 3D camera. In terms of audio quality, the Coolcam Eagle has a built-in stereo microphone but it has no microphone jet. So unless you want to use an external recorder to record audio separately and sync it with your video, you have to completely rely on the built-in microphone to record your audio. So let's go out and shoot some video using this Coolcam Eagle to find out how the audio captured by this camera's built-in microphone. Okay, now let's see how is the audio quality using the beauty microphone to record audio. I'm now in an outdoor space, quite close to a playground, so you may hear some noise from the playground. The kids are having fun running around shouting. And I purposely picked this place because I want to see how the microphone's um, audio capture is like when there is a bit of background noise, but also in an outdoor space when you are shooting vlogging style video. Today is not a really windy day, there's a little bit of wind, so hopefully that means there is no wind noise that is captured by the building microphone. But yeah, if you are shooting on a very windy day because it doesn't have any wind muff on the building microphone, so you may capture a bit of wind noise. Just like a lot of cameras released these days, Kandao has also released a smartphone app for this Coolcam Eagle, and it is a very important part for this camera. So I will have to talk about it in this video. Actually, I have rewrite and updated this review quite a few times already as Kandao has released a few new version of this smartphone app and also firmware during my review and they have added a few new features and addressed some issues that I was going to mention in the original version of this review but now I have to update it because of the new changes. The first big feature that they have added recently is the electronic image stabilization. I've mentioned before that the Coolcam Eagle doesn't have any optical or sensor-based image stabilization system. So if you don't shoot with a gimbal or place the camera on a tripod, then the footage could be a bit shaky. But now you can easily stabilize your footage by going to your smartphone app and click on the anti-shake button on the screen. So let's have a look at this side-by-side -side comparison of the original footage and the footage after applying the electronic image stabilization. I think the app does a pretty good job in making the footage to look a lot more steady. But as usual, a trade-off with the electronic image stabilization is that it would need to crop the video a little bit as it needs to shift the video around to make the video looks more smooth and remove all those little bumps and little vibrations. I do wish that I can apply the electronic image stabilization on the camera itself without having to transfer the video to the app and process it there. But when I mentioned this to Kendall, they told me that this is actually coming very soon to the camera, which is definitely a very good news. The latest version of the smartphone app that I'm using right now also allows you to do some basic editing of the video that you shot with the Coolcam Eagle. You can do things like trimming the video, applying filter, or add some pre-created 3D effects on top of your video. There are also a few background music that you can select and add to your video. It's not going to replace a full video editor, but for casual users who want to do some quite basic editing to the video, it's pretty easy to use and it's probably enough. 
So once you've done your editing, you can then export your video and you can choose whether you want to export it as a normal 2D video, full side-by-side -side video, half side-by-side -side or parallel eyes format and the video would have the correct metadata added for YouTube. So if you upload it to YouTube, the video would be processed correctly as a 3D video. That metadata is very important because if you just directly copy the video from the micro SD card and upload it to YouTube, YouTube doesn't really know it is a 3D video and doesn't know how to make it a 3D video. So if you want to upload the video to YouTube, you have to either process the video using the CoolCam app first, or you can download the metadata injector software from Kendall's website and then use it to inject the metadata on your computer before you upload it. Now, while I do really prefer if the captured video by the CoolCam Eagle would already have the metadata injected straight out of camera, but at least now you don't have to do it manually by running some scripts on your computer anymore, which is what I did when I first start working on this review. The CoolCam app also contains tutorials about how to use this camera and there are also other features like firmware update and remote shooting. There is some noticeable lag when doing the remote shooting but it is still a very useful feature. So if you bought a CoolCam Eagle, definitely download the CoolCam app and have a play with it. When you purchase the CoolCam Eagle, there are a few accessories that you could purchase and you should really at least think about some of them. The first one is the spare battery, which I do highly recommend you to get at least one if you are planning to shoot a lot of 3D video or photos. Coolcam Eagle's battery life is really not the best and the thing is, even when you are not recording video and you lock the screen, as long as the camera is still on, the battery still drains pretty quickly. A fully charged battery may last about around an hour or so, which to be fair, it is not too bad if you compare it to a lot of other small action or 360 cameras in the market. But getting one or two extra battery is definitely not a bad idea if you are planning to use this camera quite a bit. Fortunately, the battery is only $20 each and for heavy duty users, you could also consider getting the dual battery charger as well. If you don't want to buy the extra battery, there's another option and that is to use a USB power bank and connect to the camera's USB-C port and then you can use it to charge or even power the camera. This way you could shoot much longer as long as you don't mind having a USB cable attached to the camera when you are shooting. And then there is a carbon fiber selfie stick, which is this one. This is specially designed for the CoolCam Eagle. It is a collapsible selfie stick that is pretty compact when you collapse it and it has a ball head at the top. It is definitely a great accessory for taking selfie or vlogging style video. The selfie stick also looks pretty cool, I think. And since it just used the normal tripod screw to attach to the camera, so you could use it with any other small action or 3D camera as well. Kendall has created a sharing platform for CoolCam Eagle owners to share the photo and video they shot with their camera. To share it, you just need to click the share button on the screen and then you choose how long you want to share it and whether you want to add a password or not and then it will upload your photo or video to their server. You can then share the code with another CoolCam Eagle user and they can download your photo or video onto their camera. It's quite a cool way to share what you have captured and you can join their Facebook group to share or check out the photos or videos that are captured by other users. It is a pretty nice feature but since it is only available for CoolCam users, so it has quite limited audience base. I would like to see Kendall continue work on that and expand this to a wider community in the future. So if you have watched my whole video up to here, you will understand what this CoolCam Eagle camera is. This camera has quite a few limitations and some design decisions that I don't fully agree but there are also some really cool, brilliant ideas as well. I guess that's the thing when you are creating a camera that is pretty unique in the market, 
it's always going to be tricky as you don't have a well established formula that you can just copy and follow. There are lots of things that Kandel has to try out and experiment. Some works very well and some not as much. Some flaws are pretty much unavoidable. Even Apple's first iPhone was far from perfect. But despite some of these limitations, I still really enjoy shooting with this camera. It is a really unique camera. The quality of the photo and video is better than I expected. And being such a compact camera, I can carry it with me to anywhere, anytime. And that is just fantastic. The Clip On VD Viewer is such a fun way for me and my family to view the VD photos and videos immediately after it was captured or even when shooting it. I really like what Kandal did with this camera and I honestly think we should encourage more companies to try new ideas and bring us something that is unique and fun like this cool cam eagle. I also really like the fact that Kandal has already released a few firmware and app updates to deliver some new features to address some of the issues and overall just improve this little 3D cameras quite a bit compared to when it was first released. Even just over the last month when I was working on this review, there were already a few updates and some of the complaints that I wrote down in my initial draft of this review is no longer an issue or it become much smaller issue. Now you could argue the camera should release with all these bugs fixed and every feature implemented. But like it or not, this is not how things work these days. Even some big companies like Nikon or Panasonic would release a camera and then later on add some more features and fix some issues. And for a much newer and smaller company like Kandao, they do really need to start sell their product as early as possible to get some money in. And that's just how most of the tech world works these days. If you want a perfect flawless camera, I would tell you this Coolcam Eagle is not the camera for you. But if you are happy to accept some of the flaws and want to try out a camera that is fun and different, this Coolcam Eagle is the most fun camera that I have used for quite a while.